I work at a hospital. I don't want to specify which one because of privacy reasons, but it's a big one, and one of the oldest in the country. Specifically, I work in the RMI department, short for release of medical information. What we do here is provide medical records of patients to various people on request, per HIPAA law. If you aren't familiar, a patient can provide an authorization to allow someone else to look at their medical records. Most of the time, it's a family member, like a spouse, sibling or child. For the recently deceased, it's the administrator of their estate. We also get a lot of authorizations and requests from doctor's offices and other practitioners as their patients come and go. Being a hospital, we're open 24-7. Since other hospitals are also open 24-7, that means that we almost always happen to have someone on staff that can respond to these requests in case of an emergency in the middle of the night. That's me, the overnight records clerk. It's a pretty simple and honestly slow job. We have an electronic medical record, EMR for short. It was installed a long time before I was hired, probably 20 years ago or longer. It's pretty great though. It's basically our own internal Google for patient records. We don't even really use paper anymore. Every patient file since we installed it has been digital and searchable by name, date of birth, social security, etc. It really makes the job easy. It's got backups upon backups, and IT has pretty much made it so we'd never lose a single record. But seeing as how we're an old hospital, we still have a ton of old paper records too. They're all filed in this huge room down in the basement, in the pre-Civil War part of the building. No one in my department has ever had to go there. Requests for records that old never come in, so no one in the last 20 years probably never even had to pull one of them. In fact, I don't think I'd even laid eyes on the door of the old records room until the early morning hours today. I got a request for an old record from an estate lawyer's office that must have been burning the midnight oil it was obviously non-emergent, because it was concerning the medical records of a patient that appears to have died before the Korean War. That, of itself, is pretty unusual. The resolution of someone's estate is usually done within a year or two of their passing. I'd certainly never received, or even heard of one, lasting this long. However, it was accompanied with a signed court order confirming the selection of a new executor of the deceased person's estate, and it was signed by a judge, so it was the real deal. And besides, it's not like I had a lot going on. So I hopped up from my desk and walked down the hall. That part of the building is pretty quiet at night. The admin wing and the accounting offices are all empty and dark. Passing by the front desk, there's not really any signs of life. There's a few souls loitering around the cafeteria, mostly for the free coffee that tastes like garbage, but whatever. I ducked down a side hall and took the freight elevator, because it's the only one that goes down to the maintenance level. It's a bad swipe elevator, so patients and family members can't use it by mistake. The maintenance level is pretty dimly lit at night. There's only about three ladies on staff in housekeeping, and I gave them a quick nod as I passed their break room. It's a slow night, so they're probably just as bored as me. It's kind of neat when you go from the new part of the building to the old. You can instantly tell the difference, especially in the basement. The newer gas lines stop where the old construction starts and curve back into the wall, taking a different route to their destination. The boring, painted cylinder block wall gives way to a beautiful, dark wood panelling, and the floor itself changes from plain white tile to long wooden blanks that make a soft thud sound with every footstep. Turning a corner, I saw the door that leads to the record room. Like the rest of the hallway, 
is made of some ancient wood that has been stained beautifully dark. Despite its obvious age, it's gorgeous and seems no worse for wear than it probably did when it was first built some 200 or more years ago. The brass knob turned at a touch and the door, while heavy, swung open almost effortlessly, invitingly. I was immediately treated to a scent that was simultaneously woody, earthy and antique, like a library filled with old books. It reminded me of what old parchment would smell like. It made my imagination picture relics of bygone days. Ahead of me, in dim electric light, stretched row after row after row of wooden shelves, packed to the brim with old folders stuffed with paper, all neatly arranged in perfect clean lines. Wow. As I passed from row to row, I was in awe of how impossibly clean this old room is. I guess maintenance really does their job well. Odd, because I can't even get them to vacuum my office on a regular basis. The record I was looking for had a name that was fairly deep in the alphabet, so I had to walk a large number of rows just to find it. It was a common name too, which made it likely that I'd have to pull a lot of files to find the particular one I was looking for. Mentally, I braced myself for what might be a long night. My suspicions were soon proven correct. There must have been a million James Smiths in America. It wasn't until I had already ruled out 20 individual records that I figured out that something was wrong. And that's why I'm telling this. So you can know what I now know. The first several ones I ruled out were simple. Wrong date of birth, wrong social security number, wrong date of death, the usual stuff. But as I continued onwards, I noticed little things. Impossible things. This James Smith had a birth date of March 5th, 1735. That's before the hospital was even built, I thought to myself. This James Smith had a birth date of June 14th, 1657. That's before this was even a country. This James Smith had a birth date of, quote, the third day of September, in the year of our Lord, 1461. That's before this was even a new world. I thought it was an elaborate prank for a while. I thought it was a hoax. Someone was pulling a fast one on me. I laughed nervously to the room and the pile of paper around me. I started looking around for cameras. Oh, good one. I said loud. Very funny. Then, I came across one with a time of death declared 1326 hours on Tuesday, January 7th, 2020. That's ridiculous. Very, very funny. I tried to cover up the growing nervousness in my voice. Okay, fine. I thought in mental defense. Whoever did this couldn't have possibly done it for everyone. I went to the next row and pulled a file at random. Smith, Jan K, born April 5th, 2022. I spun around and grabbed another file. Smith, Jane Rebecca, born 2nd of March, 1679. Not possible. I could feel my mouth going dry. I shoved the two files back into place with shaky hands and walked down to the T-section. No one would possibly place that many files for a prank, right? Thomas, Aaron B, 23rd of July, 2023. Thomas, Aaron B, 11th of September, 2001. Thomas, Aaron B, 4th of February, 1312. There is a perfectly reasonable, logical explanation for this. My mind was reeling. 
but what? I left that row and wandered down several other intersecting rows blankly as my mind raced. Impossible dates, impossible scenarios. How is there a medical record here for someone who died, very obviously, some other place and some other time? It's completely, logically impossible. Okay, so people from all over, from dates all over the calendar, maybe try someone famous. I raced over to the H section, listening to the strange, echoing sound that my footsteps made on the wooden floor. I did a report on him when I was still in school. I own every album, I've watched every documentary, I've dressed like him for Halloween last year. I know as much as you can possibly know about him. There is no conceivable reason he should have a medical record here. I dashed down the long row labelled Hen, then thumbed through the tabs as quickly as I could. James Marshall Hendricks, date of birth, November 27th, 1942, date of death, September 18th, 1970, at St. Mary Abbott Hospital, Kensington, London, England. This should not be here. The file fell from my hands. Why is this here? Papers scattered across the floor. Papers that didn't belong in this building. I could see his death certificate. I could see the doctor's signature. Impossible. On July 15th, 2005, my father died in front of me. A brain aneurysm. In our family home, halfway across the country. I am certain he's never been in this building his entire life. But his file is here. The truth is sinking in. Everyone that's ever lived, or is living, or is ever going to live, their files are somehow impossibly in this room. Everything about their medical history their birth, their vaccination records, their regular checkups, their illnesses, their cause of death, everything. Even if it hasn't happened yet. I've been in here for hours now. I must have looked at 10,000 files. I do not know how. It's impossible. Yet in front of my eyes and all around me, here it is. A complete record of humanity. Everyone you've ever known, met, hated or loved. There are names in here that are in different alphabets. There are dates in here that are not on our calendar. There are places listed that I've never heard of. Your record is somewhere in here too. And so is mine. Everyone you'll ever know. All that have come before you and all that will ever be. They're all here. This is impossible. Except it's not. Only one more problem. Where's the door? <laughs>